This video will cover the Latin term in media res. Be sure to add it to your notes. In media res, well, what does it mean? It literally means into the midst of things or in the middle of the action. It's used to describe any story or a TV, film, or even a video game for that matter that begins in the middle of the action without providing any exposition. So for this reason, these stories that begin in media race, they're not in chronological order. In media race is usually used to grab attention and to build suspense. Because you're thrown into the middle of the story, you have lots and lots of unanswered questions. And this makes you keep reading or keep watching or keep playing because you want it to be explained. Because you start in the middle of the action, when stories use a media race, they almost always have a flashback where they will go back in time and fill in the missing details so that the readers or the watchers or the gamers aren't confused. So you see this graphic down here demonstrates that it's not in chronological order. It will start in the middle and then at a certain point it will flash back to the very beginning, fill in the details, and go pretty much all the way back to where the um, opening or the media race picked up and then you'll jump back flash forward to the end. So it's not in chronological order. That's very important to understand when you're reading the Odyssey. Let's take a closer look because this can be confusing to first time readers. What you see in front of you is a timeline of the Odyssey. And we actually have some events that aren't even in the Odyssey. For example, we start out with the Trojan War, which lasted 10 years. And notice that is not in the Odyssey. That is technically in the Iliad. After he leaves Troy, he goes to the coast of the Sicones. He visits the Lotus Eaters, the Cyclops, Aeolus, Lastrogenian, Circe, Tiresias and Land of the Dead, Siren, Scylla, Charybdis, and Helios. Now these are all just really strange names because you haven't read about them yet. But all of these adventures take place in just about a year to two years. After that, Odysseus really spends most of his time away from home, trapped on an island with the beautiful nymph Calypso. And he's stuck there for approximately seven to eight years on this island with no way of escaping from her. So you would think that the story would start here when he leaves Troy because the whole story is about how he gets home. But really, the story doesn't begin until right here, within one month of Odysseus returning home. What this means is that the story starts here. Eventually, a flashback has to occur to tell how he even got to Calypso's island. So the overall structure of the book ends up looking something like this. In the red, you can see where Homer tells each part of the story. So you can see it starts where the star is, and the first eight chapters okay, all cover this period of time right here. Him leaving the island and trying to make his way home after leaving Calypso. Eventually, he will get to the court of King Alcinous. You see his name right here. And it's only in King Alcinous's court um, where we have the flashback. So Odysseus uh, tells his story to King Alcinous. And when he does, that's when we jump all the way back here. And starting with leaving Troy, he tells Alcinous about all his adventures, how he came to be on Calypso's Island, ultimately how he escaped, and then when he's done telling the story, Alcinous ends up helping him head home, provides him with a ship, and eventually he does return home. But you can see the story isn't told in chronological order. Books one through eight take place here, and then we jump back in time with books nine through 12. Then we jump back to the present, books 13 through 24. So you can see how this would be confusing if you're not prepared for it. A lot of literary works, movies, and different things start in media res in the same tradition as the Odyssey. So 
uh, for example, here's just kind of a funny picture. This is definitely uh, in the middle of the action. So if you're watching a TV show and this was the opening shot, uh, you didn't show what happened leading up to this crazy car accident. You don't know what happened before. So instantly this sucks you in and makes you want to keep watching the show to see what happens. Uh, kids movies often do this as do most movies. In the movie Ratatouille, uh, we're panning over the city. We hear some muffled noises that sound like gunshots. And then we see Remy leaping out the window. And that, of course, is when the flashback begins and he starts to tell his story. In the movie Megamind, it's something similar. We see Megamind falling to his death through the sky. And then we leap back in time and he tells his story. Way, from the way, 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 way back, way back to the very beginning. Uh, like I said, lots of TV shows and video games also do this. NCIS is one popular TV show that you may be familiar with that does this. So the episodes where it begins with some type of action. So for example, in season five, when it opens up on one of the characters giving Gibbs uh, the main character CPR and then it flashes black and white like a photo has been taken and then it will jump back in time you know two days earlier or 24 hours earlier um, that's a good example of a media race it's effective because it sucks you in you're like oh my gosh what happened and you keep watching until eventually you come back to that present moment and that's a media race let's see if you can apply what you learned Think about your favorite TV shows, video games, or movies. Give an example of one that you know begins in Media Risk too, like The Odyssey. Be sure to explain your reasoning and your response, and be sure to write a short but well-developed paragraph. Don't forget to proofread.